SAP Business One Workflow in Release 9.0 is a new platform that enables users to define workflows in corresponding business processes in Business One. It aims to provide greater process transparency and standardization across Business One, increasing user productivity and promoting greater collaboration and efficient communication. Our company, OEC Computers, would like to define a new business process for their organization, and to do this, it begins with the SAP Business One Studio which is the next generation of Screen Painter and a completely new development environment delivered with SAP Business One 9.0. You can create add-ons and workflows within SAP Business One Studio. Let's now show you how easy it is to create a workflow for OEC Computers. OEC Computers would like to create a workflow to define credit limit terms to new business partners when a business partner is created in the system. We start by selecting Create Workflow and then define a name for the project, such as BP Credit Limits. We are now in the Workflow Designer and are presented with a toolbox that contains 12 key elements to produce a workflow. This type of graphical representation is based on the business process model and notation standard for specifying business processes within a business process model. This standard is used across many different industries for defining business processes. By clicking in the middle of our workflow area, we can then see the properties section on the right, which defines how the elements will work within business one. So let's assign a process name for this example. To begin creating the workflow, we simply drag the elements we need into the workflow area. Workflows generally contain a start and a finish event, so let's firstly drag the start event into our workflow area. From here, we have the option to select further elements, which are most commonly used, or we can continue to select the elements of our workflow from the toolbox area. Now we have selected the start event, we will now select the user task object and connect these objects together with the arrow connector. So now after the start event, the first user task will be started. The first user task in this workflow process is to add a business partner to the system. So let's now assign some properties to this user task. We are first going to begin by assigning a business object to the user task. There's no inputs objects for this particular user task, but there is a business object that we need to assign. By clicking on the drop down arrow, OEC computers don't actually use any additional add-ons with their company. So we can actually use the standard business objects for this particular example. And here we are going to select business partners. The operation type for this user task is add mode. And now we can select the participants that will actually execute this user task. Again, we can log in with our credentials to get a list of users, but we know which user we would like to assign to this task. And the user is going to be Brad Thompson. So we can simply cancel out of this window and add the chosen participant, which is Brad. Brad Thompson is now assigned as the user for creating business partners for this particular workflow. So now we can see that we've selected a business partner business object. The operation type is add. We have assigned Brad to this task. And the next thing we should do is actually rename the user task ID so it's actually a little bit more clear within the workflow itself. So we can rename this task as add BP. We can also add a description to ensure the assigned user understands what needs to be done during this task, such as add new business partner.
So now, in relation to the business partner object, we have now created an output, which is the business partner itself. We can also update the ID in the name of this object, so it's a bit more intuitive as well. So now we're going to define the next user task, which is to update the business partner details with the appropriate business partner payment terms. For this example, we're actually going to drag the user task from the first user task. Again, we need to define the properties for this particular user task. The business object is going to be business partners as well. The operation type is going to be update because we're actually going to update an existing business partner master data in the system. We're also going to rename the user task ID. And we can also include a description as well, such as assign credit limit terms for this business partner. There is also another output object for this particular task. We can now easily assign the output of the first user task as the input for the next user task, for example, so they can enter the business partner payment terms. And to do this, we simply click on the output from the first user task we drag the arrow across to the second user task. Then we select input objects in the properties window. We select our input object, which is called BP, which is what we named the first output object. And then we select the expression type as command and the command type, which is based on, and click OK. The last property for this user task that we need to define is a participant and that participant is going to be Bill Levine. So he is going to be assigned to this particular user task. So now our workflow has been defined as such that Brad will add a business partner to the system and Bill will update the business partner master data. To finalize this simple workflow, we need to end the event by selecting the end event element. and now we can save our workflow. We are now going to export our workflow so we can import it into Business One. You could also export an image of the business process for OEC computers to include in their business process documentation, for example. I'm now logged in as Brad Thompson from OEC Computers. From Administration, I can navigate to the Workflow menu and open up the Workflow Manager. Brad can now import the workflow that has just been created, which can actually be done by any user if they have the right authorizations. I select my workflow file, And as you can see, the status is importing. If I close the Workflow Manager and reopen it again, the status will have been updated to imported. I can now activate my workflow by selecting the Activate button. If Brad now navigates to the Workflow Instance window and then selects the workflow template that we just imported, Brad can now see a full visualization of the workflow process, which has not been started yet. With this simple workflow, we have not defined a conditional or trigger-based start process, which is possible. Therefore, we need to manually kick off the process. Brad can now navigate to his workflow work list window. He can now see the workflow listed as a task to be picked up, and the current status of the task is not completed. Brad can simply pick up the task by ticking the pick up checkbox, 
and clicking pick up. He can also drill down into the task to see some basic information about the task requirements. You can see, for example, the description of the task. You can also see any output data and any other further information relating to this particular task. By clicking Process, Brad can then proceed to process this task and the Business Partner Master Data window will open automatically based on this particular workflow that we defined. So now we're actually going to create a new business partner in the system. And then click Add. So now we've successfully created a business partner in the system. If we now go back into our workflow list and refresh it, we can see that the task is no longer visible in Brad's workflow list. I am now logged in as Bill Levine. If Bill now navigates to the workflow menu from Administration, Workflow, and navigates to his workflow worklist, he can see his workflow worklist task that needs to be picked up as well. So by ticking the pickup box and selecting pickup, the task has now been picked up by Bill. Bill can also drill down into the task and actually see further details relating to the task, such as the description that he must assign a credit limit term for this particular business partner and the actual input data, which is the business partner that was just created by BAD. By selecting process, the business partner that was created by Brad is automatically opened. So now by navigating to the Payment Terms tab, Bill is able to update the credit limit based on his task requirement. If Bill goes back to his workflow work list and refreshes it, you can also see that the task is no longer listed and has now been completed. We have now demonstrated how to create a very simple workflow for OEC computers. You can define much more complex workflows that may require a conditional or trigger-based start, for example, and include any complex scripts, which may have many users assigned to executing these individual tasks for your workflow process. With this new workflow platform, with SAP Business One 9.0, greater process transparency and standardization can be managed across Business One and is an effective way to control and manage your processes. Check out the many workflow examples that are now available on the SAP Channel Partner Portal.